Welcome to the introductory module of Measurement for Improvement. Six short videos have been created to support your QI learning on measurement and to build capability among family medicine residents, the faculty and interprofessional team members of the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, members of its Quality Program Committee, Community of Practice members, and the Quality Improvement Decision Support Specialist so that all can confidently use data for improvement. This module provides information on getting started with measuring for quality improvement. At the end of this module, you will be able to discuss the role of measurement in QI, explain the difference between data for improvement versus data for accountability and data for research, and summarize the principles that drive good data management. Quality improvement is a journey, with gains and setbacks, ups and downs, and it really goes on forever with no final destination, as we all continuously identify and address improvements in the processes and actions that we follow every day. And like any good road trip that we embark on, having a map to guide us is always a good idea. We do know from research that those organizations who adopt a QI framework or methodology are more likely to have a successful quality journey. There are a number of recognized QI frameworks, including nine that are listed in Appendix C of the Improvement Guide. One of the most popular and familiar frameworks is the Model for Improvement, which is used by many healthcare organizations in Ontario. Health Quality Ontario uses the Model for Improvement and has embedded it into the Quality Improvement Plan template. The model is made up of three simple questions. What are you trying to accomplish? How will you know a change is an improvement? And what changes can you make that will result in an improvement? The second question is of particular importance to measurement as it naturally drives us to measure so that we can decide if a change is an improvement. The second framework that has become a popular improvement methodology in healthcare is lean. Lean, sometimes referred to as the Toyota Production System, or TPS, has historically been a powerful method for cost reduction in manufacturing and has more recently been successfully applied in healthcare. Lean focuses on delivering value from a customer's perspective, on eliminating waste, and on continuously improving processes. Measurement is a critical factor in being able to successfully use Lean for improvement. The third improvement methodology that we will highlight is Six Sigma. Six Sigma uses statistical analysis to improve business performance. With the goal of eliminating mistakes, waste, and rework, Six Sigma provides a means to identify and prevent variation and reduce defects. Measurement is a key component of Six Sigma methods. Lean and Six Sigma are often used as one methodology, or Lean Six Sigma. This involves incorporating the ideas and tools of Lean into the Six Sigma methodology. Lean accelerates Six Sigma, enabling organizations to reduce waste and defects faster and more efficiently. Regardless of the roadmap that you choose to guide your quality journey, one common element in all of the identified roadmaps is measurement. Measurement must be done in quality improvement work because it is only when we measure that we learn. It is commonly said that all improvement work requires change. However, not all changes lead to improvement. And when we make changes that are improvements, we are looking for fundamental or breakthrough change, change that results in a new level of performance. We must be able to illustrate fundamental change through measurement. Quality improvement teams need to measure so that they have feedback on whether the changes they are making are having the desired impact or improvement. As teams measure, they must keep two concepts in mind. Firstly, they need to be mindful of the differences between using data for improvement, using data for accountability, and using data for research. Secondly, teams need to follow good measurement principles. What we use our data for will affect how much data we collect, how we will run tests with data, 
how we will deal with biases in the data, and the statistical tools we use to make decisions with the data. In improvement work, we use data to bring new knowledge into daily practice. We do many sequential observable tests. We gather just enough data to learn from, and our tools for decision making include run charts and control charts. These practices differ from those used in accountability work and research, both of which we have a lot of experience with in healthcare. While this experience in using data is beneficial, because people are comfortable using data, it can also lead to challenges. For example, it can be difficult for those with experience in research to be comfortable with improvement data because they believe it is not rigorous enough. Others may be resistant to using data for improvement because they assume that the data collection will be too expensive and too time consuming. And finally, if people working on improvement suspect that their data will be used for judgment, they will be resistant to collect it and learning opportunities will be lost. For all of these reasons, it is critically important to understand that while measurement is required to know whether our changes are an improvement, it is also critical to understand how that differs from using data for accountability and research. And finally, in addition to understanding the use of data for QI versus accountability and research, we must also follow good measurement principles. In quality improvement, good measurement principles mean that our measures are actionable, meaningful for multiple users, and acceptable for patients. The measures must respect confidentiality, be feasible to obtain without being overly burdensome, and have well-defined specifications. In plain words, the measures should be relevant and meaningful to the questions being asked by those working in the field. This brings us to the conclusion of our first module. As a result of this video, you should be able to discuss the role of measurement in QI, explain the difference between data for improvement versus data for accountability and data for research, and summarize the principles that drive good data management. Included are several links that you can use to continue your learning. The next module will cover building a measurement plan to support your quality improvement journey.